Hey everyone, I'm Marianne Mitchell. Welcome to Whole Artist Mastery, which is all about owning your authenticity to make compelling work that's unique to your voice. So today I'm going to be talking about how you evolve a painting beyond the first day, beyond the first pass, or what I call reckless abandon. So I'm going to be walking you through a set of questions that I ask myself and ways to look at the painting that will help me and help you when you're at this point move beyond your initial output of paint. I always tell everyone that when you start a painting, it's crucial that you start with 0% expectations and 100% kindness for yourself because the two go hand in hand. So that's what I did here. And I've been looking at this painting for a while, trying to figure out, I mean, the first thing that you do is look at what you have and make sure that you look at it with a critically analyzing eye as opposed to a judgmentally criticism or a judgmentally critical eye. In other words, if you critically analyze what you have here, you're asking a set of questions. If you judgmentally criticize what you have here, you're making yourself feel um, like maybe it's not what you want, and maybe it isn't what you want, but by asking questions that help you move forward, you feel more like, you know, there's hope here, <laughs> as opposed to, I'm just gonna trash the whole thing and call it a day, which I've been known to do, and I am talking to you about all this from personal experience, that I have learned that when I judgmentally criticize the work, it's much harder to keep going and feel good about what I'm doing than if I critically analyze, okay, so here are some questions to ask. What do I like about this painting? Okay, what do I dislike about the painting? Are there any areas in the painting that really draw me in, that, that sort of hook me emotionally, intellectually, through the material, the marks. Um, and is there a feeling that I'm already getting from the piece that's inviting me to go in that direction? The first thing I'm going to do is look at it in all four directions. So I invite you to join me to do that along with me. So I'm looking at it in this direction. and return it this way. And return it this way. I'm purposely staying silent as I'm looking because I need to just really take it in and see which direction is um, talking to me. So I've decided that when the orange and the light blue are going vertically in the piece, it's less interesting to me. Um, and when it's this direction, I feel like this is too much like sky. and. And I, I'm really intrigued by this dark little doorway that's emerging. It's yet to be a doorway, but this is one of the things that you will learn as you look at your work in that you start seeing things that you see before in your paintings or that you, you know, things that are inspiring to you that you've been, or themes that are inspiring to you that you've worked with in the past in previous paintings. So I'm always intrigued by this little dark invitation to go beyond into the ether zone. And when I look at it this way, 
This is in the upper half of the painting and more visible in terms of uh, a focal point. So I think this is the direction I'm going to go back into it. Thinking about developing the composition so that I feel like this is a little doorway that I'm going to go through. Now, how am I going to do that? Well, I'm first thing I'm going to do is hold my hand up and knock out this orange area here because it is um, what I would consider a doorstop. In other words, it catches your eye and it makes it very difficult to move away from this orange uh, mark here. So I'm going to hold my hand up and knock it out. Of course, then what happens is that this becomes top heavy with orange and yellow. So in fact, this is um, you know, an important factor to pull your eye out of the top band of orange and yellow. Um, so now I'm going to hold up my arm and knock out the lighter blue area down here at the bottom. And that makes this very, um, very dominant. So I think one of the problems I had with this piece is that I'm, I'm really, I have yet to feel some sort of invitation, emotional invitation to work with the colors that are here. I have a feeling you probably know what I'm talking about. So what happens when there's really nothing that's pulling you in? That's when I go into what I call Reckless Abandon Part 2, where I go back into this without thinking about what I'm going to do compositionally. But because it's the second time of going into this painting, or it's actually the first time of going into the painting that it's now here, um, I'm obviously going to be uh, influenced by what's here. I'm going to be influenced by what's here, but it's going to stay away from determining exactly what I do. I'm going to show you what I mean. So in spending a little time looking at this painting, I've decided that the color I want to go back in with is um, a blue-purple. And the way I'm making that is, it's really like a French ultramarine, only I make it with cobalt blue and a touch of uh, quinacridone red. So there has to be more cobalt blue than quinacridone red. And so this is beyond blue, but um, not purple yet, somewhere in between. And I'm going to put a little bit of walnut oil. This is actually walnut alkid, alkid, sorry, walnut alkid oil. And I put it in this little dropper bottle so that I can easily get it out. Not very many drops takes, takes you a long way with the paint. Um, so I want it to be a little thin because I'm gonna drag it across, ready for this, I'm gonna drag it across the purple. Get, I think it needs to be just a little bit more uh, thin. And we'll see what happens. And I'll pick this up with my squeegee, which I get from the Cold Wax Academy. And here we go. If 
want to blend, by the way, this is oil paint for those of you who are unaware of that. Um, I've been painting in oils for, well, since 2015. I was taught how to paint in oils in art school and painted in oils till the mid 90s. And then um, started working in oil pastels for a while. So I really like that glow coming through. I'm going to make more of this. Cobalt blue. And a fair amount of it so I can really cover a nice amount of space. And about this much quinacridone red mixed with the blue. Always add a little bit to start. You can always add more, but you can't take it out. So I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more red. I had more color blue than the first time around. And the advantage of mixing a color like this as opposed to buying it is that every time I mix it, it's slightly different. So that gives some variety and playfulness in the color in your painting. Playfulness is the wrong word, but um, some color light, color undulation, color movement, that's the word I'm looking for. When the colors are all slightly different, it provides a dynamic quality of movement within the color when your colors vary just a little bit. Okay, so I think I want just a little bit more again. Sometimes it takes a while to get the right color that you want. Draw this out so you can see you know, a little bit more of this so it'll really glide across. And guess what? My eye wants just a little bit more quinacridone red again. So I draw it out like this so you can see the color that I've got here. And I'm going to pick it up with my squeegee and go across this way. And now, yes. I'm going to come in with a larger brush and start to spread it a little bit. It's actually not quite the brush I was thinking about, but any brush will do. I'm just kind of blending with the squeegee marks. And in fact, what I'm realizing is that a better tool would be my rag, which is covered in dark colors. I have different rags for different colors. I'm going in a circular direction here, okay, rubbing out the, the tool marks, and also rubbing the color a bit so that it rubs away and you, you can see the color underneath. And already, I'm much more intrigued by this painting. And I'm gonna stand back. It's always really important, you can't see me at the moment, to stand back. I'm about six feet away from the painting to see what I have from far away because you're unable to really see that when you're up close. And I'm gonna put more of this in here. Across. Um, so you see I've actually preserved the one area that I was most intrigued by and unified the whole piece and now it's time for me 
to spend who knows how long until I really have an idea of where I'm going to go next. So I'm hoping to document the development of this painting in my YouTube series, so stay tuned to see where it goes. Well, this painting has certainly moved beyond where it was. And again, what I've been talking about is the kinds of questions that you need to ask yourself that are inviting you to keep going in the painting. What do you like? What do you dislike? What is interesting to you? Is anything interesting to you? Is there an area that you want to build on? And if the answer to all of those questions is, mm, not really, not so much, then you go back as I did with Reckless Abandoned Part Two and with standing, you know, I'm standing in front of the palette, really just feeling, okay, what color do I feel like working with today? Recognizing that it might be different tomorrow. So I'm going to continue working on this piece and periodically you will be seeing the development. So I hope you'll stay tuned for that and all the other wonderful things that we together and me myself talk about in the whole Artist Mastery YouTube channel. So if this was inspiring to you and helpful and informative, I'd love for you to press that little like icon down below and subscribe to the channel if you have yet to do that. And visit the whole Artist Mastery website. There are lots of wonderful things there, including a free PDF booklet with all kinds of information about composition, color, questions to ask yourself to um, further your development in knowing what your voice is all about and how your voice determines how you use unique how you uniquely use your visual language as opposed to the way anybody else does so that you can show up in the world as the artist that you really want to be so thanks so much for watching i'll see you next time